Hi, this is Etty Elkis. And this is Karen Cohen. And we are Yentas in the City. Today, our guest is Mindy Weiss. Mindy Weiss started her career as a custom invitation designer. And today, she's one of the most sought after party planners in the entertainment industry. She has successfully became one of the most accomplished and influential people in the party planning and lifestyle field. From planning massive celebrity events and weddings to birthday parties, we can say that Mindy Weiss dominates the event planning space. Mindy's magic touch has been seen on everything from Diana Ross's 75th birthday, Adam Sandler's wedding, Ellen DeGeneres and Portia de Russi's uh, wedding, and of course, the nuptial from NBC, uh, The Bachelor. And uh, let's not forget the elaborate first birthday party, Stormy World, for Travis Scott and Kylie Jenner's daughter, Stormy. And let's just say, when it comes to parties and events, Mindy Weiss is the go-to person for the Kardashian family. I don't know, Mindy, if you know, but in the entertainment industry, we call you the party planner legend. Um, I love that. Mindy, you <laughs> have <laughs> your own product line and books, and which we will discuss. Mm -hmm. um, Mindy, I know you for many, many years. I'm one of the privileged people because of, because of my entertainment career. I've been to a lot of your parties. And I could just tell you that pictures don't do you justice oh, okay. because when you walk into a room that Mindy Wise did, I can't even explain it to our listener. It's breathless. It's wow. And it's Mindy is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot, <laughs> you know, Mindy's in the house when you watch it. And, uh, you know, I just want to tell you, like, every time I sit in a party that you do, for you know for my celebrity clients i just sit there and go wow how does she come up with this so welcome mindy and i'm so happy thank you're doing you. this thanks for having me welcome mindy thank you Karen. you look, you look fabulous thank you, you you are one of the most sought after wedding planners on the planet and you're a member of the tribe welcome to yentas in the city this thank is you yeah this is a big time of year, as you know, for planning parties, the months yeah. of June, July, and August. How yeah. have things changed because of COVID-19? Well, actually, all my events from this year, except for one, has been postponed till next year. So literally, we're holding out for a beautiful Jewish wedding in December, um, and hopefully it will happen. But Basically, right now, we're just doing events for 10 people and under because that's what the governor is letting us do. We're doing a lot of drive-by parades, which there's rules for that now, and we're trying to follow the rules. I do have clients who want to do larger events, and I, I literally send them, you know, all the paperwork we receive as it becomes a misdemeanor, you know, there's social distancing right. rules, and we're following them. Um, so basically there is no parties this year for very few parties. For are, are we seeing more destination weddings right now, um, prior to COVID and as a result of COVID? Well, prior to COVID, yes. I mean, that was a big part of, um, my business and a lot of my friends who are event planner business. Now there is nothing. So all travel, you know, it's very... Right. difficult obviously to travel and also next year we do have some destination but will the guests feel comfortable what you know, are, there's what are some of the most popular destination spots would it still be like cabo or cabo italy is huge right now we right. we were right. doing a few weddings in italy hawaii um mexico puerto Vallarta. Um, Cabo's very, very popular. I've but heard we, the, we were going around the world. Yeah, I heard we are still people. going to Italy, even though with with the Corona. The, yeah. No, no. So and right now, they're, they're before, just, yeah, this was before Corona, and um, I do have one wedding planned next year for Italy, and I know there are weddings planned for Italy next year, and we're going to have to wait and see. I think everybody's going to be ready to go. Right. Yes. Um, but I, we don't know. Also, Spain is a hot spot for a wedding? Um, you know what? I have not done a wedding in Spain. But yes, I know a lot of my friends do coordinate weddings in Spain. My 
my son did a semester abroad in Sevilla and I, you know, he wants to go back and he loved it. So I'd like to go to Spain, but I've not planned one there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mindy, I know you for many years. Mm -hmm. I know what kind of mother you are. You are a phenomenal, phenomenal mom. Not just a part. So as serious as you take your party planning, you yeah. you took motherhood to a whole new level. And throughout the years, some some of the times I had to deal with you directly. Mm -hmm. You really, your family comes first. Like even well, though your clients come first, I don't know you. Well, but now now my granddaughters come first. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now no, the kids I'm don't. Free. You don't care about the kids anymore. <laughs> I yeah, have I three boys. Birthday party. I can just imagine your grandchild's oh, birthday party. Yes. Well, even my kids growing up, I think it was a lot of my guilt of, okay, I work every weekend. I work crazy hours. And um, so I kind of let it all out on their parties. But I have to tell you, with this corona virus, it has given me the opportunity to spend really great quality time with my kids. I have two of my boys living here. My older son and daughter-in-law, they do drive-bys because they don't want me near the kids. And um, it has been amazing. I, my children did not know I knew how to cook. They laugh at me constantly. Um, I think it's strange even for my dogs to have me around. You know, <laughs> our weeks were 80, 90 hour weeks, insane. So I want to ask you, how did you, because when, when I was throughout the years, I noticed that you are many hours outside of the house mm -hmm. because I, like, I was like, when does she sleep? Like, no. <laughs> you everybody wondered like, that. Uh, there was yeah. no email that was not answered. There was nothing no. that you, you're like hands on. Yes. And you had such a good relationship also with your family and you raised an amazing family. Mm -hmm. I want to know. What do you owe that success to? Like, how did you do it? How did you manage so much and still was such a hands-on mom? Right. I think as long as you commit to being there for the very, every moment is important. I know that. But if you're there for the peak moments and the moments you're not there, you're reassuring you, you wish you were there. I mean, uh -huh. I loved when my, my middle child, my youngest, baseball games were the seven o'clock time because I could be there, you know, like, yeah. or I'd be setting up a party and go, I'll be right back. And then I would go make sure that I see that one hit and then I go back. So, yeah. you know, like I try to do everything. And then Sunday became a very important day for us where I pretty much demanded everybody <laughs> eat together. It was our Shabbat dinner. And, you know, <laughs> it was your own Shabbat. <laughs> yes, yes. So everybody knew how important that is. And, um, and the grandkids know it too. Like, you know, every time well, I see your them. Your grandkids are so time. cute. I, I stalk you. them. <laughs> good, good. No, they are pretty special. Um, and they're girls. So at least I got my fix you know, <laughs> of the girls. Yeah. Right. What, what would you say, what type of party would you say is your biggest challenge to try and pull off? Well, destination is, is somewhat of a bigger challenge because it's not only about the bride and groom, it's about the guest experience. So we make sure the bride and groom and the families are number one, but the success of an event also is determined by guest experience. So, you know, you don't want to hear your guests saying, oh my God, we got off the plane. We didn't know where to go. We're... So we are, the minute any of the guests arrive on the ground, we are there to be their concierge service. So it's just a lot of extra work, a lot of extra um, things to go wrong, hopefully not. But remember also, if it's destination, some people show up, let's say on a Thursday, you know, and then there's a Thursday event, Friday event, Saturday wedding or Sunday wedding, and then, you know, a brunch. Would you say that um, celebrity weddings are also a big challenge for you to pull off? Well, celebrity weddings are very much like all the weddings, except there's a security element. So it's just one more element of, you know, challenge, but I don't find them very hard. I find that celebrities are very considerate of time because they're very busy and they have a schedule, a set schedule. I like to know the schedule, so I'm not bothering 
anybody, but it's very organized because they're very organized. The so I almost find it easier except for the security aspect. Right. That's what I was just going to say. The security yeah. would be the, the biggest. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, everybody wants that moment. Everybody wants that I do and that same feeling. And because they're celebrities doesn't mean they don't want to wear the dress and have all the traditions. Right. And it's unfortunate because, you know, they're stopped and they're, you know, a helicopter can ruin the whole experience. I need to ask you right now, because we need to know as Yentas, who yeah. are uh, some of your most opinionated celebrities? Hmm. Hmm. Who's opinionated? Well, everybody, they all want what they want, you know, just like my regular brides. But I have such a good relationship with everybody. Everybody would think it would be Kanye, but he is a genius. He, his ideas like make my eyes pop out of my head and, mm -hmm. and they're actually, they're challenging yet fantastic. Cause when I pull that off, I feel like a game show. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> win the prize. <laughs> and I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, and I, I literally adore him. I think he gets a bad rap. You know, he wants things a certain way, but he's paying for it. So why shouldn't he have what he wants? What would um, be some outrageous request that he's made to you over the years? The only outrageous request is just the timing. You know, he comes up with an idea, and then he wants it quickly. I mean, does he want what? camels? Does he want camels at a party? No, no he what would never have that. that. What was one of the oddest requests that you ever got? That you went, wow, what am I going to do with this one? <laughs> well, I, there was one request where a client wanted, um, it's inappropriate to use the word, but little people, Mexican wrestler, little people, wrestling during cocktail hour. And he thought that would be so funny. And I did not find that funny at all. In fact, so not funny that I said, no, I'm not doing it, and you can fire me, I don't care. And then he found that funny that I said no, and actually it was in his speech at the wedding imitating me like, she would do anything. I would say, do this, she'd go, okay, do this. And she would say, okay, and then I asked her for this, and she said, fire me, I don't care. You know, it's so, so funny because I've been to one of those events where they had them, and they yeah. were wrestling, and I, I, I almost found it like borderline insultive. But and it's I felt uncomfortable. So bad. I felt so bad mm -hmm. because, you know, everybody was laughing, you know, and it was not funny to me. And you're yeah. right. You're right for saying no because it, that it's was. It's like, it's almost secondhand embarrassment. It's like, it, that's what the, everyone's going to remember. So you remember that. It's right. going to take away the feeling of love, the beauty, everything. Right. You know, I, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. Oh, wow. But it's I love funny, funny things, things that are actually funny. Right. <laughs> it's great that you stand your ground on what you believe oh, yeah. in, you know? Yes. You're not going to compromise your... In my world. head, I always say, hey, I could be a great barista if I had to. I could just do, if I have to, you know, whatever I'm going to do to make a living, I can do it. So we, I was in one of your events at the Beverly Hills Hotel that, that you brought sumo wrestlers. So <laughs> yeah, for the bar mitzvah. For the bar mitzvah. Yeah. Yeah, the and kids. I was laughing. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, that well, was the, kid, the kids put on those suits. And well, I want to tell you, back then I was much skinnier, so I put the suit on. Right now it wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had that at my son's bar mitzvah, too. It was so much and fun. I loved it. it makes for great pictures. Yes. <laughs> it was, it's funny, yes. So, Mindy, what happens as an event planner when you're working with someone with, like, absolutely no taste, oi, and obviously your name is on everything you do? Mm -hmm. So how, how do you deal with that? You know, I have to tell you, sometimes it's very difficult because growing up in Los Angeles and then doing events in Los Angeles, I tend to know a lot of the guests because we're just all from here. So I look at the guest list and with like, oh my God, they're going to think I did this. They're going to think I did this, you know, or designed it. But the truth is, and I can, I can pivot people, you know, and do the best I can, but I am an employee. They have hired me to make their dreams come true. That is their dream, whether it's unattractive or 
too over the top or, oh my God, that is their dream. And I can make suggestions and I know how to feel it out. If they're stuck on that dream, it's, it's not my place to, I mean, if it's dangerous and just so awful, I definitely will. Spend. But if it's just a matter of flowers that I don't like or, or food I wouldn't eat or too much of something, it's, you know, that's how I learn. I don't want all my events to look alike. I just, you know, I want them to be beautiful, but. I think I saw you say once that putting a monogram on the dance floor is not really. It's so done. It's, it's done. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, just, it was great when it first came out, but now it's done. I mean, okay. yeah. I want to ask you, uh, Mindy, the Kardashians really yeah. know how to party and yeah. their style. And yeah. they're like the Vavoom. Uh, the best. How, the best. I the love best. it. <laughs> how is it to work with them? Are they as fun? Let me, let me just tell fun. you, you would love them with your heart. They are menchy, delicious, kind, never ask me for anything for free. They, grateful. Chris is always, thank you, thank you. Right. Like, she's like us. I am telling you, she loves a great party. She loves memories. She has scrapbooks. She is a mother. She is 100% mother. Like, we were just completely loving, accepting of all the guys in the kids' lives and all their stuff. And, you know. So what you see is really in reality who they are. Oh, well, that's, there's no, that's it. That's it. That's it. it and, but for me, you know, I don't get all the reactions, but I would be sad if I didn't. One time I remember they didn't use me for something and I was literally sad. But of course, one of them called and said, don't worry, like, but no, they didn't know I was sad. <laughs> but that's how conscious they are. I'm telling you, they I are. need things that I know it isn't true because I know, I know. I they love, are. love yeah. them with my heart. I'm telling you. They could be very Jewish. <laughs> they could. Yes. I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. when you do a wedding or mm -hmm. a party with people like the Kardashians that you really like and they're very easy and they are appreciative of your work, it's much easier to be more creative, no? Absolutely. You want to do everything for them because you of the love. You know, when someone's mean to you, and obviously not all my clients are delicious, you know, right. just not. <laughs> but you're like, okay, I'm going to do my job. I'm going to do the best I can do, but I'm not throwing in that menu if you cancel it. You know, right. a lot of the times I'll throw in, you know, oh, you know, some people have to reduce a budget and they'll take a menu out, take something out. And a lot of the times I'll go, oh, let's just do the menu. I love them, you know, and, right. but, you know, you get treated the way you're treated. And I have been so lucky with my, I've, I've had a handful of people that were not nice or not honest, but you know, otherwise, I've been doing this a long time. And to say I've only had a handful of people who were disappointing. Mindy, I know some of those people that were <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that are very demanding. And it's not easy because the, the reason I ask you, because you don't want to do, like you do it because you have to do it. Yeah. But you're not, your heart is not in it 100%. No. And you look at the calendar and you go, oh my God, it's almost over. It's almost right. over. Yeah. <laughs> the calendar. None of you don't want it to be over. You know? Right. You <gasps> mentioned about the menu and uh -huh. a little bit. And I like, I saw something and I was talking to Etsy about this and I just thought it was genius, both of us, because we love French fries. And uh -huh. you went on record saying that you think that every party should have a basket of fries on the table. And Etsy and I are with you. Girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. Some, some people don't understand that we're at our food tasting and every place that knows me, you know, where I go to, even if it wasn't on our tasting, they bring French fries to the table as a joke for me. Well, and every chef does not like it because they're, they're, they're going to get cold. Yeah. So they don't like the fact that their food's going to get cold, you know, and people are going to eat cold French fries. And I, and I said, um, I don't care. 
cold french fries are just as good french fries french and fries people, are fun. and my clients will look at me and go i'm not doing french fries and i go okay but the week of they'll say all right just do the french it's the best the I best know. i have to ask you just like the french fries how, mm -hmm. um i want to know what goes to your head somebody comes to you <laughs> because let me tell you something some of the things i'm like Oh my God, how did you think about this? Yeah. Like, uh, what is your creative process? Somebody comes to you, they go, I want X, Y party. This is yeah. what I like. This is what I want. What is your creative process and how do you get to the vavoom that you get to? Right. Well, I'm literally not great with logistics. I'm good with design. I always say I love the fluffy part, right? So right. the first thing typically they do is show me a Pinterest, a page of what they want or things they're loving. And I always say to them, rip out one flower in a magazine that you love and I'll know exactly their look. Um, so I start pulling out things from these designs and I start designing for them and say, well, what do you think this, this? And then I get the picture. We literally produce design books for our clients now and kind of a story from your guests will arrive here. Maybe we'll give them a cocktail, you know, and then, on Friday night, we're gonna have Shabbat dinner or a Friday night dinner or rehearsal dinner. And this is what it's gonna, so we do miniature versions, like we'll set up tables to show them what the table's gonna be. And sometimes it takes a little while to get to exactly what they want, but I'm always, that's what I love to do. I don't love ordering dishes or chairs or, but I love to pick the chairs and the dishes. Right. So um, I just, I just swallow up design magazines, you know, House Beautiful and El Decor, I believe not. Not I do ma wedding magazines, although there's not many left. Um, but go online and find things that are unique and people I haven't seen just yet. Just yes, wow. Well. Mm -hmm. Before every party, um, before you put these extravagant parties together, the invitation is the first thing that someone receives. And I'd like you to talk a little bit about the invitations and like what is trending today? What are we seeing mm -hmm. in the wedding invitation world? Mm -hmm. And um, my understanding is that millennials are still sending out save the date cards via email. And is it um, appropriate today to maybe give a website to RSVP or is it still to give an actual mail in your response to the party? What, what's Good the question, good question. Well. Yes, we are doing mail, um, email save the dates. Um, because many reasons, price, but also we can get a lot of information on an email. Mm -hmm. You know, whether where the place is, if it's destination, the schedule, you know, so much information on there. And then from there, we're doing websites where we kind of just keep adding and adding information when a couple wants to do an email wedding invitation i really try hard to explain to them the importance of the memory that touching the paper feeling oh, the ink what is but i will tell you that a lot of my clients are going back to traditional invitations you know just a beautiful no more of the bells the whistles the bows the boxes the music it's just a beautiful um, nice heavy card it could be engraved or letterpress is the most popular right now where you know you feel it and it's going down instead of up. Um, and that's where we're at 99% of the time. But when, when somebody wants to mail a, a save the data, I go, you do? You know, I mean, I love stamps. So you know, I get excited over, it's so you funny know. because we are old school and yeah. everybody said, you know, it's not trending. I'm like, Karen, I don't care. My daughters get real invitations because there is no way I'm going. Even birthday parties for my kids. I, I, you know, people go, why are you wasting money? And you don't just put it in the class chat. Yeah. The whole fun is making the invitation. Yes, I know. For my granddaughters, they don't let me do invitations. They let me do birth announcements, but not um, invitations. I follow the rules. I am the mother-in-law of the year, but my, um, my daughter-in-law, Tali, literally, I kiss her and I could hold her hand. She is, she's everything. She, I got very lucky. That's a blessing. Wow. 
I told her I'd keep her more than my son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So does my mother. <laughs> I want to tell you, I just did a drive-by for my daughter. She graduated medical school. Oh my and God. Let me tell you something. Awesome. I needed you there. I should have hired you to do it. <laughs> then it was so stressful. Did you no. see what I did for my son? No, he I didn't. graduated NYU, right? He oh, wouldn't let me do anything. He wouldn't, you know, I said, I'll buy you a cap and gown. You could walk down the stairs to da, 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 da. <laughs> Mom, I'm not doing any of it, right? So I got two signs for my front lawn. One that said, um, congratulations. And I put an X over the tuition. No more tuition. <laughs> and then another one, Alex graduated NYU. And my husband and I wore a cap and gown all day. Aww. So we yeah. surprised her, but she yeah. was happy at the end. In the yeah. beginning, I thought she'll freak out, yeah. but she was very happy. I should have done that. I and then all the Yentes friends I... helped me, of course. Right. Oh. Right. Right. <laughs> all the Yentes were in on it, so. Of and course. You were so creative. You know what she did, Mindy? She huh. took actual pharmacy pill box, little, you know, pills. Oh. Yeah. She filled it with candy and made a prescription. Oh my God, that is cool. And you it was must awful. be so proud. What kind of doctor does she know? Yet? She's going to be a surgeon. Oh my so she's God. starting in Ohio. She's moving to Ohio to oh start God. a residency. That's so. <laughs> incredible. So, so actually, good. Mindy, I met Mindy, I think, right when, right when she was like three years old, was the first time I dealt with you with the party with one of our clients really uh, yes my god so crazy and the bar mitzvah that we were talking about is getting married he was supposed to get married in august and okay. it, it just postponed it to next year yeah so he, he's yeah. going to do it in 2021 wow so yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a busy year it really yes, is it will be, be a, a special Hopefully the antithesis of this year, lots of celebration, lots of happiness, lots of new understanding for the future. And, yeah. I want yeah. to ask you, Mindy, I have a lot of friends that are party planners, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of them work with the Israelis the communities and right, right. Um, but you are special. I mean, oh, all of them are special, so but nice. there is nobody like you, Mindy, really. Oh I'm God. saying it from the, because even them, they, when we talk, and I tell them Mindy Weiss, when it comes to my wedding, she's doing it. Nobody <laughs> else, I love you guys, but nobody's going to do it other than Mindy Weiss. I love that. That's so uh, nice. Um, I want to tell you, people in the business, what advice would you give them? What is like the main advice you would give somebody who is either starting in the business or is already in the business? Mm-hmm. Well, because you're an icon, you know, <laughs> which I believe me when people say that to me, they go, oh, my God, I go, trust me, I pick up my dog poop every day outside. So <laughs> there is no icon. Here. But I am proud. I am proud that it built it to something like this. Um, first of all, there are a lot of newbies coming out. You know, people do their own wedding and they think, oh. I can be a, a wedding planner. That was fun. That was easy. Not realizing that truly it is a 24 seven job. You know, I know there's some event planners that put a limitation on when you can call or talk. I tried that, but I have no boundaries. It's just my personality. I'd rather answer a simple question at seven o'clock at night and not have them anxious the next morning at seven in the morning. Right. So you have to have an extreme amount of patience, a great ear for listening, patience, listening. And something that I learned when I was older is reality. Do not promise people things that you cannot deliver in their budgets or in their dreams. I had to learn the hard way because sometimes I was paying for their dreams, you know, oh, and uh. so you have to be diplomatic because you're dealing with different families, different personalities. You know, you have to be a therapist in there and you can't go in with such a big head of saying, oh no, you cannot do that. You cannot, you, you know, you gotta be a positive person and work it around even if you don't want them to do it. You can't tell them you don't. You gotta manipulate and kind of get to that point of, but it is a hard job. It is do a- you have, 
do you ever have like a husband and a wife not on the same page where one of them wants one thing and the other one wants another thing? I'm sure every that- day. Every day. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yes. yes. All the time. But you know, it's great. Wedding planning is a great precursor to marriage. You have to compromise. compromise. You have to deal with money. You have to deal with getting along with people's families. You have to deal with um, greeting and meeting people you don't want to be with. Right. So there's such a great uh, learning curve of each other. I've had brides and grooms that literally have looked at each other in shock over the answers of you know what they want. But also it's wonderful to have a man involved because there's two different thinkings, like how we, you know, we right. think different and it's, it makes it for a nice balance. You know, it, it really does. You know why I survived the industry? Because Ken's full-time career, she's a therapist and we're there friends for over 30 years. So she's my therapist at 24 seven awesome. and I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> But then people that they have a nice therapist in me for a year, you know, <laughs> that I'm, and right. sometimes they'll just call me and go, so what do you think? Nothing to do with the wedding. You right. know, what do you think of this? And then after the wedding, there's definitely separation anxiety and, you know. Oh. Yeah. Minty, you have your own product line, your books, your amazing book. I bought, even though not, nobody got married in, yet yes. of my kids, yes. I bought your book just because I wanted yes. to see it. <laughs> I would have given The first one, the first one. Yes. And it's amazing. And I, you know what? It's not just for weddings. You know, it's yes. just in, in general, it puts all your thoughts together and you... Yes. Yes. So, believe it or not, I already started filling it out. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. That, that's the wedding organizer. Did extremely well with that. And then there's my almost 500 page book, the uh, wedding book, the big book for your big day. And it truly, even event planners have bought it. it it's my little baby, took five years to do it. It really tells you everything about getting married. From the beginning of getting engaged to what kind of bride are you and it, it's it worked out well and then i have a baby organizer so that you keep all like we used to do when we had babies we had our little oh, memory it. books yeah, yeah a little thing so a lot of people do that online now but i i really wanted to do that and did you do I, the baby one when you had grandkids is that when you did it right before right before i did that one and now i wrote a flower girl book on how to be a flower girl and a ring. Oh, baby. that's so cute. Uh, yes. So are you doing a lot of baby showers as well these days? I do a lot of baby showers and a lot of kids birthday parties. Yes. Wow. And you know what, in my business, those aren't the money makers, you know, but they are the happy makers for me. Right. You know, it's, very easy for me to do. It's so happy and being around kids and all my, um, I don't like to call them employees, but my, my colleagues or wh whatever, but, you know, it keeps them busy. You can get so creative and um, I really, really, really enjoy them. They all yell at me. They go, why do you keep doing it? I go, I just think it's important that we do these parties. So I'm going to ask you a Yenta question. Yeah. Yeah. Is it true that you will love your grandkids more than you love your kids? I love them differently. I, because you can really do anything and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I, my husband and I look at each other and about an hour in, we look at each other and go, okay, you want to go? <laughs> like, it was so the time. <laughs> but my, you know, I've been lectured a lot from my kids. Like you can't oh. do this, you can't buy this, but you know I just listen. But I do it. You right. know, what are they gonna do? Right. Are, and and now my Goldie, who's gonna be five, she whispers. She goes, "When I sleep over, we're not watching TV or eating in bed or anything like that, right?" Like she already knows that she not that she's lying to her parents, but she like she <laughs> she knows that she. She can do oh, no yeah. wrong in grandma's and she gets yeah. whatever she wants. She knows. Yeah, so, she calls me her bestie. Okay, you want to melt my heart? Uh, yeah. So I want to tell you, I was kind the other day. I was like, oh my God, you're moving to Ohio to the oldest one. Are you going to miss me? She goes, well, do you want to know the truth? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. What is the truth? She's, 
I'm going to miss grandma and grandpa. And she's like 27, 28 year old. I'm going to miss them, Bond, and I miss you. I almost started crying. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. There's something. And everyone told me that before I had the first one. Everybody told me. And I go, uh -huh. Wow. It, it's well, Mindy, we really had such a great time with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. As women, as women, you inspired all the working moms out there. Continue Good. your magical work. We loved having you on our show, and we really hope to have you on again. We would like to thank all of our followers for listening to this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Yentas in the City and hit that bell button for notifications when we post. Please remember you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Yentas in the City. You can also write to us at dearyentas at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and answer your letters on our weekly advice column. We also want to thank our team, Frank and Sharon, for all the behind the scenes work. And lastly, uh, our sponsors, we want to thank Soft Smart Systems International and Conquest Realty Investments. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We have a lot more coming. Until next time, this is Karen Cohen and Etsy Elkis, and we are Yentas in the City. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you, Mindy. And I want to invite you for Shabbat when you have time with your grandkids. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. So they'll have fun. <laughs> oh, yeah.